Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Welcome to my review for the Power Rangers Lightning Collection Armored Red Ranger and Gold Zeo Ranger set. This is the San Diego Comic Con exclusive that you could pick up at, well obviously, San Diego Comic Con. It's also going to be on Hasbro Pulse's site within the next month. But let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to take a real quick look at the box first. I'll try to remember to put a timestamp of when I start talking about just the figures in case you're not interested. But the box is neat enough that I, I really want to go over it. So let's get these two useless guys out of here and go over the real star of the show, the box. As you can see, it's like in this dual packaging thing where it's got the art that we have from the Lightning Collection, but it's just full on. And it's actually in this little, like, holder, like, book holder thing here, and you take them out here. It's, and it's, like, really nice, like, solid cardboard, too. It's not, like, cheap or anything like that, which is kind of neat. But you have these two art bits here, and then on the back, same thing. It almost looks like it's evil and non-evil red here, the way it works. And then you open this up, and... Wait. Oh! And then you reveal where the figures are, and you get a regular style box here. The only real complaint I have is it's got these little inserts here which make it hard to put back in because it catches on it, which is super annoying. But then this is almost more like two traditional legacy boxes stuck together. It is weird that this is regular Mighty Morphin both in name and in the art since it's the armored version. But this is obviously where the figures were. And then on the back, you get like a CGI rendering of them, and then it shows both of their individual stories. Instead of like reading it like I'm in class, I'll just let you pause it there to read it and stuff like that. But it's a really neat packaging, and I thought it was just worth noting for those of you that are collectors that like to display those and stuff like that. I thought it was a really nicely put together packaging. I don't know why I said nicely like that. So, all right, let's get on to the main event. So, like, at about 1.48 seconds, I can put the timestamp in, then I started talking about it. Okay, so before we dive fully into the figures, let's talk about the accessories. So, obviously, this guy, he comes with the power sword and the dragon dagger. You've got the sheathed version of the blade blaster. you got the gold power staff. I'll go over them in more detail in a minute. But in addition, you also get the open version of the gold power staff that comes with the gold Zeo Ranger. So that's cool. Pretty nicely painted. This seems a little bit basic, but it hits the main notes of it and the gold paint and stuff looks good. You do get a regular version of the Blade Blaster, so you can have them, you know, using blasting mode. This is a step up from the Lightning Collection, which just included the closed version, and that was it. I mean, if I could pick any one version, it would be the other one. And then for each of them, you have one other set of alternate hands. They're both identical, just some closed fists on them right now. You have the holding weapon hands, so you get two sets each of different hands. And then you also get alternate heads, which I'll show off swapping off in a minute. So you get Happy Jason, which I believe this is the one they have with Armored Red. So that's, you can see his hair doesn't move realistically, just like the show. So yeah, that's Happy Jason. And then you have just kind of like normal Stern Jason. Like, not Howard Stern, but just, like, Stern. What's funny about these is they're actually really well done and pretty accurate, but also unsettling. Like... Yeah, they did a pretty good job on them, but they also kind of disturbed me to my core. And another cool bit, you get, get the full-on power blaster for some reason that actually does separate. In fact, let's take this from you briefly, guy. Sorry. You're going to fall over gold. I knew that was gonna, you're gonna both going to fall over. You know what? Shame on you. Shame. You sit in the corner and think about what you did while we review the power blaster. So you can actually, you know, put this on here. It's not a separate component. You have to use this one. So if you wanted to display that for some reason, you also want to have him holding the power sword, SOL. But that's really cool. I mean, that's a neat bit that once you get all five, when they eventually release them, you can have them all holding it. And it's pretty well done. The, the power sword itself is the most detailed aspect of it. I think it looks the best. Nice shiny silver paint here. The red paint looks good here. I have a little bit of a, a red, like, paint mistake here on this side, but this side's all clear. The, the rest of the weapons aren't as nicely painted, but they do separate, so you have the power axe. I mean, it hits the main notes, but it just feels like these were a little bit more of an afterthought, just because, you know, they're not going to be the main ones. And you got the power bow and the daggers and the lance, and they all uh, separate. So you could, like, it's kind of neat because you could have the rangers wielding different weapons if you want to, and it just makes sense to add to the playability that you could separate them instead of it being one piece. Still just kind of odd for me, but still, it's kind of neat. So let's go ahead and take a look at them, shall we? Let's go one at a time. So here we have Armored Red. I think this is mostly a nice figure, but I think gold is the star of the set easily. Uh, I will be 
comparing it to the Lightning Collect or Lightning. I'm going to compare it to itself. Uh, no, but to the Legacy Collection figure, and I will also be taking a look at it compared to previous releases. But let's talk about him on his own first. So first thing with the head sculpt, the only real major complaint I have with this is that the visor isn't accurate, meaning it's supposed to have like a white outline, and the outline is supposed to go right here. The Lightning version, I keep wanting to say Lightning, the Legacy version had the same problem. But as far as the sculpt goes, it looked a little odd in press photos, and it still does a little bit, but I still think it's one of the more accurate attempts at the MMPR Red Helmet. When I get the other versions in here, you'll see what I mean, but I guess it's just an odd shape that varying degrees that they have just not gotten right over the years. So I think that in terms of just the sculpt, it's actually one of the more accurate ones to the way it feels. And other than the white stripe bit, I think it looks pretty solid. Then you have the armor here, which is a soft rubbery plastic, just like the White Rangers figure was. And you can't really remove it. I mean, there might be a world where you'd be able to stretch it out like a t-shirt and get his arms through it. I don't think so, though. You could cut these off. It's not, like, glued attached, so you can, like, see the regular parts under here. So, it's not physically attached to it. So, if you really want an MMPR red figure now, you could buy this or buy a second one and chop this off. So, but it's not, like, concretely attached to it. But it's also not like those ones where you could remove the pieces and put it on anything. Like I said, I'm sure if you were, like, a, a serious customizer and you wanted to buy a second one, you could probably find a way to take it off and put it on one of the others. But, you know, I wouldn't advise it. As far as the gold here, it does look pretty solid. But I actually don't think it looks as gold as it should in the show. Especially compared to this one, which actually got it right this time. And again, you'll see what I mean when I compare it to other figures, which I just kind of find to be funny. The gold on here looks nice, though. You know, they got the, the colors right for the red and white. MMPR at his core, or at their core, is kind of hard to mess up the details because you basically just have two primary colors. Uh, here we have the belt details. Let's get that to focus in on it, which is pretty solid. You can see the Tyrannosaurus mold in there. Damn it, Dagger, stop covering it up, which is pretty well done. You have holsters for both the Blade Blaster, which you see I have the the sheathed version here, which is all that the Lightning one, I keep wanting to say Lightning, Legacy one came with. You also have one for the Dragon Dagger, and then you have the Dragon Dagger itself, which let's take a look at if I can get it out of hand, which is pretty decently detailed. I kind of imagine that whenever we get the Green Ranger or the Silver Stripe one, it'll be like even more detailed, but this, again, hits the, all the right points. You can see the coin in there. Um, yeah, it's actually pretty well done. I mean, there's not really a whole lot more that I'm going to complain about. I think it looks pretty solid. Articulation-wise, pretty par for the course. You have a nice hinge joint right here, solid movement. You have your elbow joint here, your swiveling, swiveling at the hands. Nice joint here on the legs, nice ball joint. You get your, like, single knee joint that works pretty well there. You got your swiveling up here as well. You have the hinge on the foot. You have both the waist articulation of, like, this hinge joint and this sort of all-around movement. And a solid ball joint on the head, so you can do creepy stuff. Very well articulated. Lots of good potential for poses. And also, I'm happy to report on both of these. Spoiler alert for when I go over gold. But I am happy to report that I have no loose joints on this figure. So, like, overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with him. I think, again, gold is the the star of this set. I think that he could be a little better in some aspects. I think the gold could be punched up, and I think they could have stood to actually have the correct lining for this. But speaking of, let's go ahead and bring in a comparison to the Lightning, damn it, the Legacy version. There it is, you can see. There's a clearly huge difference. Obviously, this guy is a lot taller. He uses a much more muscly mold. The helmets are very different. He had the exact same problem right here of the, the helmet detail not being correct like it's that same silver outline and they also missed the outline there so they actually repeated the same mistake but you can see that this is a much more accurate helmet sculpt I think the gold looks a little bit better on this one actually I feel like the true like happy medium is right in between these two of the, the two colors on there but this is like clearly a sculpt improvement this is overall more accurate proportion both in terms of the humanoid figure and in terms of the helmet Really quickly, I just wanted to show off what I mean by the way it's supposed to look. This is the regular Legacy Collection figure that has the correct lining for the white. That's the color it's supposed to be, so that's a little bit more accurate. Still misses out on it, just a smidge there, but just kind of wanted to show you what I was talking about in terms of the color. All right, now before we move on to gold, let's go ahead and take a look at this guy compared to a bunch of previous Armored Red releases. 
All right, here we have a look at some of the previous releases of the Armored Red Ranger. I don't think this is every single one, and the only one I'm personally missing from my collection is the Fliphead one, if you put on the Green Ranger's armor, but this is the most prominent ones that I have. That's a weird way of saying it. But here we have, this is the MMPR 2010 four inch figure line. This was part of the legacy figures from Bandai, the five inch scale, that were released in the old style MMPR packaging. This is figure arts. And then obviously over here we have our Hasbro one, we have our Lightning Collection, which we, or Legacy Collection, which we looked at. And then this was like just a larger line of like 6.5 inch muscle figures that had armor with them, which I actually kind of dug in certain ones. So yeah, these are the main ones you have to choose from. Obviously there's been some improvements and non-improvements over the years. Like, it's interesting to see the evolution of how weird the helmet is done in these. I think this one, honestly, the figure art... I think it actually looks pretty solid. It doesn't age as well, like it's almost too skinny in some ways, but in terms of the helmet, I think it's one of the best helmets that they've done. And then obviously we already looked at the helmet on this, and this one's just like super Pudgeo helmet. It's really weird. Looking at the gold, I think the most solid gold is actually this one and this one. Like seeing them side by side, you can see, I think the figure has a slightly more accurate gold, and the gold on him is actually a little closer to the light, lightning, or not lightning collection, Legacy Collection Gold Ranger figure. So yeah, that's just kind of a look at the previous releases. I think the Hasbro is a pretty solid one in the middle, but I think that it still could have some room for improvement compared to some of the things these did. But there's definitely some oddball... <laughs> ugly choices amongst all these. Okay, now let's move on to checking out Zeo Gold, and real quickly before I forget, you also have this effect part accessory which is included with it. Almost forgot to mention that, I didn't want to leave that unsaid. So overall, again, I think this is the star of the set. Uh, both of their helmets looked a little bit off in the initial photos, I'll be honest, but I think maybe there is something a little bit off about it still, but it's definitely not as bad as I thought when I first saw it. I think it's overall pretty solid. And I have to say, I'm really impressed both of these figures. I don't have really any notable paint nicks. There's like one really tiny gold dot in the middle of his face. But compared to the QC on the first wave of figures, I haven't really found anything that would make me want to return them if it was a retail release. So yeah, maybe the helmet sculpt isn't perfect, but it looks a lot better and more natural than it did in the press photos, and I'm very happy with it. Uh, speaking of the details here, you got the gold chest armor here, which is actually gold. I love of gold! And all the little details in here I think are really well done and it's really nice to have the more accurate gold and like this is kind of just a review of the suit but the black and gold play very well off of each other. You have the closed version of his weapon here which basically looks the same as the open one except you know this is down on a different part and this is well closed but I think it's pretty solid. I think this could stand to look a little bit better like it almost looks like the cheaper end here but that could just be me. Um, everything else looks pretty solid. Like always, they do a pretty good job on these little cloth details to make it look like cloth actually folding. The gold here looks pretty solid as well. Nice sculpting details. The articulation is the same for this as it is for Armored Red. And again, happy to report no loose joint problems. It's a very solid feeling figure, which is really nice to have. Uh, just to show off real quick, let's switch off one of the heads. Let's give him, let's give him happy Jason just because he's like really happy that his colors are accurate. So it's really simple, you just pop off the head. This is weird, like, tiny head ball Jason. That was weird, I don't know why I said it like that. But there you go, and then it snaps on, and look how happy he is. He's like, look, my suit's accurate. He's like so happy about it. So that looks overall pretty nice, very happy with it. And it's pretty easy to switch out. I've had some figures where the heads switch out that it's kind of a pain, but these are a pretty good, like, mix between easy to switch out, but also they feel secure. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy with that. So let's go ahead and take a look now at him compared to his legacy counterpart. I almost said lightning again. Okay, so here we have the two side by side. Again, obvious size difference. There's an obvious quality difference in the mold of the helmets. I actually, I mean, I did notice this before, but it's really drawing attention to how bad this weird non-gold paint looks on the helmet compared to this. Also, the visor here is raised, which gives it a nice more like 3D look, which makes it look better. Obviously, a big difference in the color of the gold since this isn't even gold. Oddly enough, this is actually kind of close to the color of the Armored Red Rangers stuff, so th this is a clear, clear difference in which one is better. You know, th there was a huge misstep in this one, both in terms of the color and, frankly, the mold, especially once you have these next to each other. And even here, you can see with the weapon, it looks even more embarrassing that it's all bent, but this just, I mean, it does hit some of the right details, and you actually have this detailed bit here, which makes it look a little bit better in that respect, like it doesn't look as incomplete complete as this, but like the way this looks reminds me of like the Play School Heroes line and stuff like that. 
So yeah, there's an obvious quality difference between these two that this was a clear step up and I'm sure they paid extra attention to working on this lightning figure given that they knew that this was one of the biggest complaints that we had against Bandai. Alright, now let's go ahead and take a look at him compared to a lot of previous releases of other Gold Ranger figures as well. Alright, now we have a look at previous Gold Ranger figure releases. So obviously we have the Legacy Collection here. Here's our current Hasbro lightning release. This is the Chaser figures from the Super Legends line during, I think it was Jungle Fury. It was either Jungle Furies or RPMs. They came out during both of those. This is the original 90s release, which is obviously the top tier superior of all these. And then this is from the Action Hero set during Super Mega Force. So there's been some pretty decent ones over the years. Obviously, I already talked about how this one here is a huge improvement over the Legacy Collection. The 90s one's really only one you want if you're kind of a person that likes to collect, like, retro toys. This one's actually not too bad. I'm gonna be honest though, I stand by this one. I mean, the helmet is a little bit more squished. Let's get a, like a, a shaky cam look at the helmet. The helmet's a little bit more squished in compared to this one. I think the one on the left is a little more accurate, but I still stand by the Legacy, or the Legacy, the Super Legends Chaser figures. I still think they're some of the best figures Bandai ever did. And like, in the meantime, if like you're waiting for this, obviously it doesn't have the nice little details in there, but if you wanna wait for the Hasbro one, this is like a kind of a decent one just as a stand-in. I mean, not to go with the lightning figures, but you know what I mean. I guess what I'm saying is, in a long-winded sort of way, is I think that the one on the right here, the Super Legends one, is the second best figure of them that I own. And the only one that I can think of that I'm missing that I own is the little bike figures, and there was also a large-scale 8-inch figure similar to the original figure releases for MMPR. So yeah, that is about it for this one. Overall, I think this is a very nice set. I think certainly a very nice set for Hasbro's first con exclusive. I, I can definitely recommend checking it out if you're a fan of Jason or if you're a fan of one or both of these figures. Uh, I think that the weak link of the set is Armored Red. Not to say that it's necessarily an awful figure. It's a very, you know, solid figure in terms of articulation. It doesn't feel loose or cheap. It's got some really nice sculpting details. I'm, I am happy with it more than I thought I would be, but it definitely has some aspects that could be cleaned up. Like, I think this could be a little more gold. They could fix the visor on there a little bit. And I, like I said numerous times, I think he's the the star of the set. So if you're more interested in gold, just kind of keep that in mind when paying for it. As for how to get this, because it is a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, that's already passed. Obviously, you can go there right now on eBay and you can try to find one. But like I said, sometime next month, this is supposed to go on Hasbro Pulse's website. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, otherwise, if you are unable to get it from that, I would wait to check eBay until after that because I feel like the prices might be a little bit better once it's on Hasbro Pulse because it's a little more widely available. That's just a theory, don't quote me on that. But otherwise, if you really want to wait and not worry about the exclusivity of it, I get a feeling that these will appear later in the main line in some form, likely a little bit altered, but I can't see them never giving us a regular release of him. So basically, you know, I think they're worth checking out if you're interested. Just be kind of cautious of price. And I guess the bottom line is, is even though I like the set, I don't recommend paying the eBay prices of right now. Just wait for a smarter option. Anyway, that's about it for this one. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell to get notifications for all my videos. Helps me out a lot. Thanks guys, Dawson Ryder, signing out.